All right, guys, let's jump into Vodcast 6.2. We're going to talk a little bit about charge and about the dreaded polyatomic ions. Um, so we already know what ions are. Ions are formed when we gain or lose electrons. Um, but a lot of stuff about ions can be determined just from looking at the periodic table. For instance, we can know the charge on a lot of things just by using the table. And so, for instance, um, everything that is in the first column has a one plus charge. Everything in the second column has a two plus charge. So those are alkali metals, alkali earth metals. Um, if we come over to the other side, um, fluorine has a one negative charge. Oxygen has a two negative. Nitrogen and its group. And when we when I say oxygen, fluorine, nitrogen, I mean the whole group. I mean if you go d keep going down, that group has that charge. And the same thing is true over here. That all the alkali metals have a plus one. All the alkali earths have a plus two. Um, boron and aluminum and the stuff below that have a three positive charge. Um, and that goes most of the way down. Now remember that, of course, we've got our staircase here, so we've got metals and nonmetals. And you'll notice that for the most part, and we talked about this the other day, the stuff on the metal side, okay, metals are made cations, okay. And over here on the other side, anions are typically nonmetals. Not always, as you can see, boron has a plus three charge, um, and it is technically a nonmetal or at least a metalloid, but that is the general consensus. Um, silver typically also has a plus one. We know that one pretty certain. Um, there's some others that are pretty common, um, but in the whole, the transition metals, okay, the D block here, um, are what we call multivalent. Um, and what multivalent means is that they can have different charges. And then we'll come back to that when we get to naming. Um, it's not really going to impact us all that much at this point. But they just keep in mind, they can have more than one charge. Or as we'll talk about in the next lesson, they can have more than one uh, oxidation state. Okay, this brings us to our good friends, the polyatomic ions. And I say good friends very loosely because for many of you all, this would be painful. Okay, uh, what a polyatomic ion is, is that we have an atom where everything is bonded together, where several atoms, okay, many, the word poly, okay, or the prefix poly means many, okay, so when we say polyatomic, we mean many atoms, okay, so what that means is that we have ions that instead of being just one thing, so instead of it just being like a sodium or a chlorine or an oxygen or something like that, Instead of it being a single atom, it is many atoms bonded together and collectively, okay, all together, they have a charge. And so uh, you've got a list of these hopefully in front of you. Um, and these are the ones that all have a uh, one negative charge, okay? You'll note that I'm using one negative instead of negative one. We'll talk more about that with oxidation numbers. Charges, technically, you should have the number first. You're not really going to get marked wrong for that, but you should, you should have the charge first. Um, and we got a whole bunch of these here. And this is why we said before that spelling really counts um, a lot in chemistry because uh, this is a nitrite and a nitrate, and they are two different compounds. They're one letter difference, um, but they're two different chemicals. They react in two different ways. They're not the same thing at all. Um, you see that a lot of them are sort of related. So we got chlorate, chlorite, hypochlorite, perchlorate, okay, all of those things. Um, bromate and iodate, you can see sort of look like chlorate, except that they've got a bromine and an iodine in them. So we see some things that are sort of related here. Um, so these are the negative ones. So we're going to study these and uh, figure out what all of those are. Um, the negative twos here, um, you're going to see a lot of the negative twos. You'll see a lot of the negative ones too, um, particularly uh, sulfate. Okay, um, we're going to see a whole lot of that. Um, and you'll see a fair amount of carbonate. You'll see a lesser amount of some of the others. And you see, again, the spelling thing where we've got a sulfate and a sulfite here. And we're going to come back to that here in just a second and sort of explain how that can help you to know these. Um, and let me tell you the bad news about these. Um, the bad news, guys, is that there's really no way to know all the, these other than to memorize them. And when we get to naming, if you don't have them memorized, it becomes a real pain. Um, because you are never really sure, is this, does this have a polyatomic ion on it? Does it not? How do I name this? If you know the polyatomics and you know their names and formulas, naming is a breeze. If you don't, then this becomes a real struggle. Okay, so we're going to memorize these. We're going to have a quiz on these. 
um, probably in a, in a few class days. Um, I, I'll probably give you at least a week or so to get them memorized. You'll have a list of them. Um, we'll work on some flashcards and that kind of thing um, in class, but you need to memorize these. There's really no other way to get around that. Okay, so these are the, the two negative charges. Okay, we have also have a few things that have a three negative, and there are actually more than this, but these are the ones that we're going to see all the time, particularly phosphate. You're going to see a lot of that. Um, and then there are very few, but a couple of important um, positively charged um, polyatomics. Ammonium you'll see a lot of, um, like in ammonium nitrate, okay, uh, pretty prevalent fertilizer, also occasionally used for uh, some bootleg explosives. Um, and then dimercury with a 2 plus charge, HG2, okay. Um, those are the two common positively charged ions we see. Again, there are actually a lot more of these than what we're showing here, um, but these are the ones that you're likely to see. Um, and again, you kind of have to memorize those. So, in the interest of trying to make the memorization just a little bit easier, um, we want to go back to this idea of what we had before, where we had um, the hypochlorite and the chlorite and the chlorate and the perchlorate. So, let me sort of explain the way this works and the way this looks. So, our base ion here is chlorate, ClO3. Okay? Um, chlorite... Okay, and really all of these are chlor, but chlorite is ClO2 minus, okay? And if we go back and look at the others, what you will always notice is that the ite is always one oxygen lower than the eight. Now, it doesn't change anything else. The charge is still the same. The, the phosphorus part is still the same, but the oxygen is always one lower. And that's not the only case. If we look back here at sulfate and sulfite, okay? Sulfite is one oxygen lower than sulfate. And I'd like to tell you that they were always the same number, but they're not. I mean, chlorate is, is a ClO3 and sulfate is SO4 minus. So they're not all the same. Um, but what is the same is that the 8 and the ite are always one oxygen separate. Okay? The 8 is always one oxygen more than the ite. Okay? So what about the other things? What about the hypochlorite? Okay? And the per chlorate. And this wasn't the only one that we saw. Um, if you remember back, there was a uh, per iodate as well. And so they kind of go in a sequence here. So the hypochlorite is ClO minus, okay? And the per chlorate, not per chlorate, as I've heard students call it and make me cry a little, but per chlorate, okay? And so just real briefly, um, I just want to sort of go over a couple just to make sure that you know what's going on here. So if we've got sulfate, okay, Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. And so if you remember what the 8 is, it becomes easier to know what the ites are. So then if I asked you what sulfite was, then you would know that it's the same charge, okay, but one oxygen lower. All right, and then if we were going to do um, nitrate, another real common one that we'll use all the time, nitrate is NO3 negative. And so then if you had to find nitrite, we would know that that is NO2 negative, one oxygen lower always. Okay? Um, we're going to stop there with that. We're going to jump on to oxidation numbers here in the next broadcast, but I wanted you to sort of get a handle on knowing what polyatomics are and knowing what those charges are on the periodic table. You've got to know those. Know the way to do it other than memorize, because on the periodic table you get at the end of the year, and on the test you don't have all that stuff written down, so you have to know it. You have to be able to look at the periodic table um, that we drew here at the beginning, and say, okay, I know that all alkali metals are plus one, and the alkali earths are plus two, and halogens are negative one. You just got to know that stuff, guys. I wish there was another way around it, but that's pretty much the way it is. All right?